woman adopts a son, and 27 years later, she's confronted with the unpleasant truth about her decision. Ingborg McIntosh's family had taken in more than 125 foster children during the course of her life. Some stayed for a short period of time, while others stayed for an extended period of time. Jordan, on the other hand, had captured her heart in a way that none of the other children had. Jordan was just a few months old when she took him in. His mother was unable to care for him, so Ingborg came in to assist her. She had a strong desire to adopt him from the moment she took him into her home. Unfortunately, his biological mother was adamant about not doing so. It was her desire to be adopted by a black family. Ingborg tried unsuccessfully for the first four years of Jordan's existence to persuade his biological mother to allow her to adopt him, but the birth mother rejected each and every time. Ingborg was eventually able to adopt Jordan after he was turned down by all the black families who were interested in adopting him. She decides to adopt a boy who no one else wants. Twenty-seven years later, she discovers the truth that he'd been keeping hidden. After being questioned about why she was so adamant about adopting the tiny boy, Ingborg stated that the first time she held him in her arms, it was love at first sight for her. The tiny child, she claims, had already become a member of their family during the four years she spent battling to have him adopted. She states that he would be considered a member of her family, regardless of whether he was legally adopted to do so. Jordan's fifth birthday came just a few weeks after she signed the final adoption paperwork, and they went before a judge to get the adoption finalized. He was always considered a member of the family no matter what. Jordan was now officially recognized as a member of the McIntosh family under the law. While he was growing up, Ingborg never once questioned her decision to adopt him, and she never looked back on it with regret. She claims that he provided happiness to the entire family on a daily basis. Jordan grew up and went to college, just like so many other kids his age. He cried on the day he departed for college, but she also expressed her delight in his accomplishments, saying that she couldn't be prouder of him. Jordan expressed gratitude to the McIntoshes for taking him in as their own. As a result of his decision to leave his birth mother, he claims he may have ended up in prison or worse. Additionally, he's relieved that he did not become the child of a black family as his mother had wished for him. In his own words, he described the McIntoshes as his family, and he couldn't imagine being reared by any other family. Jordan moved out of his parents' house after completing his undergraduate education. Despite the fact that they were no longer living under the same roof, he maintained a solid relationship with his family. Jordan and his family received some tragic news more than two decades later. Ingborg had been feeling unwell for a while, so she eventually made an appointment with her doctor. She was diagnosed with polycystic kidney disease, which she had no idea she had. A kidney transplant was the last hope she had of recovering from her condition. When Jordan learned of this development, he was distraught. When he went to meet his mother, he could tell she was in pain since he could see her struggling. It was something he couldn't tolerate the thought of seeing. Jordan believes that no one wants to see someone they care about suffer, especially when the person who's suffering is a lovely and unselfish person, as his mother is. He claims it makes the situation worse. Ingborg was placed on the transplant list. However, she was not at the top of the priority list. She would have to wait till her turn came around to receive a kidney. Only a direct gift would provide her with the immediate benefit of a kidney transplant. A kidney donor is someone who donates their kidney to a single individual. Jordan, on the other hand, made the decision to donate one of his kidneys to his mother. He'd kept his plans from her, and he had booked an appointment to undergo the appropriate test to determine whether he and she were a match. He couldn't have been happier when he discovered that he was right. Jordan stated that he thought he'd found his life's purpose in him. The fact that she took him in when he was just a few days old helped save his life. He believed that it was his responsibility to save her life at the moment. As Jordan describes it, I feel like this was my calling in life, I think. Hopefully, when I grow older, I'll be able to do more for her, but in the time being, this is the least I can do. I just wanted to give back to her for everything she's done for me since I was a kid and show her how much I appreciate everything she's done for me, he says. According to Jordan, donating a kidney to her is only the beginning of the process. He expresses the hope that as she grows older, he'll be able to provide even more assistance to her. When Ingborg learned of Jordan's plans, she insisted that he not go through with them. Jordan eventually agreed. He assured her, though, that he had made up his mind and that he would give her the kidney regardless of what happened. Jordan was able to save his mother's life after she finally caved in to Jordan's demands. Despite all the struggles and tough times, the story ends happily, all because of the strong bond between a mother and her son. But what exactly made the young man do this for his foster mother? Does a mother love a child she's adopted in the same way as she might love a birth child? And why is it such a taboo to ask? 
One of Viral Story's team investigated more about this detail, and she says, Ask most adoptive parents if their love for their children is any different than they had for their own children, and the answer is usually no. They'll be offended you even considered it. But in families like Tina Patty's with biological and non-biological children, the question is tested. It's a question that cuts to the heart of being a parent. Alice Walker's estranged daughter, Tina, understands the uproar surrounding her comment. When she was told that having a third child naturally could jeopardize her health, she convinced her husband to adopt. Sherry, now 17, grew gradually into her mother's affections. Mary Cooper struggled to use the name daughter at first. She was a psychiatric social worker with a three-year-old son 37 years ago. Her expectations were high, but she was surprised by the differences between giving birth and adopting. Tina has been unpacking her conflicted sentiments towards her children. Louise grew up feeling like the black sheep, and her brother was the golden boy. Adopting a child can cause trauma that affects their attachment with their new parents. Author Nancy Verrier says an adopted child's link with their mother is damaged once. They won't let it happen again. Raising an adopted child is no different than raising a biological child. Genes continue to play a role in the relationship. Parents are surprised, hurt, and resentful when their adopted child doesn't react the way they'd prefer. Some parents try to make amends. As older children who have experienced neglect or abuse are adopted nowadays, they require what Adoption UK director Jonathan Pierce calls therapeutic parenting. Of course, this isn't like parenting a biological child or an adopted child 30 or 40 years ago. Parenting, like any other tough job, requires continual training, he argues. What does that signify from the feelings? They are, is love different? I don't know, it varies from family to family. In her opinion, the obligation for adoptive parents to parent therapeutically gives a small proportion of them a psychological out, which undermines their bond with their children. I worked with one adoptive mother who stated, If it comes to it, I'll keep my kids and leave my marriage. That would be expected of a biological parent, but for an adoptee, it was incredibly moving. With a few adopters, there's a thought that if they can't take it anymore, they'll give these kids up. Indeed, one in every five adoptions in the UK fails. Of course, that implies that 80% make it. At least till then, and Lisa Bentley, who adopted a difficult 14-year-old while already having four biological children, never considered giving up. I'd say my love for her is stronger and more powerful than my love for my birth children, she says. It's come through huge battles and unwavering determination, she says. It's simple to bond with her kids, but it's not so easy for a non-biological daughter. Angela Maddox feels that if non-biological children arrive later, the parent-child bond is more likely to be pleasant. Having virtually known my children before they were born, the emotion of almost knowing your child before they were born took me by surprise. But the fact that the boys were already in our family made them feel more safe. We were first. Angela says she disagrees with Rebecca Walker's philosophy. I adore all my children. You may adore any youngster. Not much, just a strange feeling around the birth. Some parents even think birth is irrelevant to the bonding process. I've never been able to distinguish between children born to us and those we adopted, says Molly Morris, who has five biological children and two adopted. Not birthing, but breastfeeding and handling my children has given me a bond with them. I'm not sure I understand those who disagree. Pam Hall opposes. The bond you share with your child is virtually indescribable. Love for another infant or child is possible, but it's a different kind of love. I believe that parents who already had children are more equipped to work on a relationship with a non-biological child. No one longs for it, says Pam, who has two biological and one adopted kid in their late 30s. The reasons for adopting varies between birth parents and adoptive parents, according to Pam, a psychiatric social worker and analytical psychotherapist. They aren't adopting to replace their own baby because they're infertile. I've dealt with adopters who were tortured with guilt and they didn't have the same sentiments for their adopted child. That's why we should stop pretending that adopting is the same as having your own kids. I'm not proposing parents explain every nuance of the difference to their kids. That'd be bad. But they must own and accept the feeling. Adoptee Lucy Houle, 25, concurs. It's pretty taboo to say parents feel differently about non-biological children but I accept this as part of my life experience that's shaped who I am. I wish it was discussed more openly. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.